Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. On this week's show, we are going to recap the Fight Pass Invitational 7 that was headlined by Nick Rodriguez versus Mason Fowler. We're going to talk a little about some of the matches that happened on ADXC4, including Theon Davies, uh, who's on that on that card. We're going to talk about some ADCC invites and uh, a bunch more other stuff. As always in the show, I'm your host, Mange, my co-host. Miranda. Hey, doing, Miranda? Pretty good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Got back from, we actually, you got back from Car Jiu-Jitsu last week. Yes. But now the matches are out, so we can talk about it. So we'll spend a little time in the show talking about, yeah, we'll talk about your it a experience. Bit doing a, a really interesting grappling card yeah to say the least but we'll definitely. talk about that probably at the end yeah that's uh, fine after we get after we get through like the wildness that was a couple of these matches yeah so before we get into the breakdowns of Fight Pass Invitational 7 which had um, a ton of like benchmarking matchups that'll I think answer a lot of questions about how certain folks are going to look at ADCC and some ADXC matches that have some athletes from in ADCC as well yes. We have a, another huge list, like we had last week, and kind of like we had the week before, of ADCC invites. So really, I every I say I've said it the past like three weeks. We can't have that many more slots left. I don't think we do. Like, there's got to be only but four or five more. I feel like we keep on getting announced. more and more people announced, but I feel like maybe people are also dropping. I think and we having... talked about this last week. So, okay, let, let me go through the list we have. One this of these, week. one of these days, we'll make a list of all of them. I yeah. know you guys did that a little. We bit did ago. a couple months ago. Um, we can you can find our show of like here's every ADCC yeah. athlete announced so far. It had the majority of the divisions, and we kind of broke down some information about all of the athletes that we had at that time. I think there's been probably about fifteen or twenty more announced, or probably like. Probably fifteen announced since then that aren't on that list. But if you want to hear a big breakdown well, of all the athletes, you, you can also do it there. probably had released or not released. You probably had uh, talked about everybody that had won too. Yeah, we talk about like, people announced like yeah, these are champions. Some of the ones that, that are getting announced are just winners that yeah. won trials, and they're just announcing them as right. they're. I guess. Yeah, like Kennedy Marseille got, got a poster this week. Yeah. He won trials. We talked about when he won trials. Um, Oliver Taza got announced, I think, last week. But regardless, uh, multiple time trials medalist. He, um, we didn't talk. Oh, yeah, we did talk about him last week, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, but, he's, but again, he was, it was end of last week, yeah. this week. Uh, Felipe Pano, we talked about him versus his, versus Rafael Lovato Jr. Yeah. last week. He got an invite, uh, former absolute champion, yeah. like not a surprise to anyone that he got an invite at plus 99. Uh, Nicholas Margali, medalist from last time, not surprising that he got an invite. He's at under 99, which, which makes for an interesting division nowadays. Uh, we also have Diego Pato, pa- Paolo Vera, yeah. uh, getting announced for under 66 in a surprise to absolutely no one. Uh, we have Gabriel Souza in a under 66. I thought he was an under 77. No. Both those guys under 66. I know Pato is because he's Those small, are my people, more. But I thought Gabriel Souza, for whatever reason. He went was... up a little bit, but he's never he's never always done under 66 ADCC. Oh, Because okay. remember, he had that match where we thought he got Alvarenga. put out at ADCC, Ru- and then he didn't, Ruin and then he kept going. Al- Ruan Alvarenga. Yeah. 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 So Gabriel okay. Souza got announced under 65. Also, super happy at this one. Gabby Garcia got announced for yeah. plus 65 kilos for the women's divisions. Um, again, you win ADCC four times, retired or not, like you get a couple of invites. You yeah. earned it. Gabby Garcia earned it. I am super excited to see her again at ADCC. She's been a staple in the promotion for many, many years. I like when they bring back the legends. Like guys, yeah. like, you know, that still want to do it, that's still on the level, bring them back in. She's exciting at plus 65. Um, and that'll be it. Will be fun because we haven't seen her since yeah. last ADCC. Give them some special vitamins, and they'll be fine. I'm, I'm amped. I'm amped for plus sixty five. Yeah, get huge. So that is the announce invites for ADCC that we have. Realistically, I think we only have like we have all the trials that are done. Yeah. So all four regions have had both of their trials. That's the men's qualifiers for both, and the women's qualifiers the second trials. We have most of our medalists are in now. We're waiting on a couple of people and a couple of like really what we're waiting on now is the. Um, finding out the last people that fell out the divisions and who the alternates are going to be. Yeah. Like, who are going to be the weighed in alternates. Like, usually that is people that have done trials and have placed, like, third. Yeah. Not one or two of the trials or, like, another guy that is maybe not sure he's going to have an MMA fight or, like, stuff like that. Those are usually your alternates and they're always good. So I'm curious who the alternates are going to be. Historically, we never need alternates week of but sometimes they will get slotted in like a week or two weeks before where a guy ha- doesn't have a visa or yeah. some other or he gets injured in camp and actually like i broke his leg he's not going to be there yes yeah, serious, serious serious injury, injury. like where he's not just going to tape it up and move on um so that's when we'll see alternates come in yeah. so it's not infrequent that we do have an alternate pulled in and we get a late alternate in there but that's why they exist so we have full divisions so 
that's fun. Um, I don't think I have any other news from this week. It's been a pretty slow news no, I week. Think it's been pretty. We're quiet all kind of ramping up towards ADCC. Again, end of May, June, July. We got less than three months away. Guys are now talking and putting like counters down for their camps, and like we're starting to see folks really start their camps for ADCC three months out. So it it's exciting. Sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miranda, where do you want to start? Wait, we have yeah, we have to. Oh, do, we have news. We, we have, have news. news. We have news. We have news. We have to like, share, and subscribe the podcast because you yeah. never do that. Say I it. don't do that. Now you you've been nice enough to put it in. I our know. Notes, now I put it in the notes, um, which I appreciate. So yeah, if you have a friend that likes the show, or you like the show, and you have folks in your gym that also watch professional jiu jitsu, or even want to get into professional jiu jitsu, like that's a huge piece of why we do this show is just to give you a jumping off point if you're coming into jiu jitsu at whatever belt. Um, and you want to figure out like who are the big players, how do I follow it, how do I watch it, what am I looking for? That's really what we do this show for is just a week to week. We keep up with all the news and, it makes, and all the stuff. And it makes us watch it all and actually yeah. put it all together. And then so we, it helps us. In it the does help us. Too. and It's great. I love doing, I've been you know, on the show for almost seven years now. Like I like doing the show still. Um, but if you like it, please share it with the folks at the gym, what buddy that you have that you want to get to watch the next yeah, one's number one or free. Fight Pass card. Yeah, we're on YouTube. We're on everywhere you can find podcasts. Um, like it, leave a comment. Like That kind of stuff does a ton for us and really helps us kind of continue to grow the show uh, and lets us get a chance to do cool stuff. So we appreciate that. Um, other news. Other news. We have, I always do self-promotion feels so weird to me. I got to get better at it, but yeah, it always feels you like... You have to at least, it, yeah. you know... I, I appreciate all the... At least we're not like some podcasts that like every five seconds do shit like yeah. that. We'll go 100 episodes and not, yeah, <laughs> not do like self Yeah, completely forget that we're supposed to advertise for ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, 2024. Make changes. Yes. Uh, who's number one? 24 got announced uh, during the who's number one last week. We yes. got some of the matchups that were announced on the card, but we now have like pictures and some, bra- and some other stuff that has come into there. We have Anna Rodriguez versus Adele Forinita, Forentino. Fornarino. Fornarino. I always want to add a T into her name. I um, that will be super fun. Uh, we all, That's basically the Brazilian Trials winner versus the Asian and Oceanic Trials winner. Yep. Which is which will be fun. Again, those are always a lot of fun right before ADCC because you see like, oh yeah, these are two people in the same division. Go at Or to adjacent divisions. Yeah. You just got to, you get a chance for that window of like into like, man, people are really peaking hard for ADCC. Speaking of trials winners, yeah. we have Elijah Dorsey, the ADCC East Coast Trials winner under 77. They got yeah. Nikki Ryan in the finals versus Joseph Chen, the European trials winner who's everyone is super hot on for like just kind of not coming out of nowhere, but really putting a stamp and getting a lot of fans coming to B team and in yeah. the last year. This is a super fun matchup. Uh, both guys are, have interesting games and Chen looked phenomenal. At European trials. What's what's really crazy to think about this too is so this is the twentieth and then the twenty fourth is main character and Joseph Chen is going against um Tenth Planet guy that likes to slap people. Andy Varela? Yep. Yep. Like four days later. Oh, that'll be a fun matchup too. Yeah. So you you're in so you're in Texas for I'm this in te- one. I'm you got tickets for this. I'm in Austin yeah. that week for work. So I have tickets to both this who's number one card, and then I need to buy a ticket for the main character main character card, and I'm going to go to both. So if you Hell see yeah. me, I'll be by myself, acting like a little weirdo. Enjoying jujitsu. Enjoying Text- jujitsu. You'll be texting the group chat, probably. Yeah, basically, I'll be texting the group chat. Texting the, gr- the grappling group chat, like, watch this. I'm like, oh, what happened, Miranda? Yeah. Like, you made pictures from behind the scenes, just Miranda yeah. there, having a good time <laughs> with all of us here in uh, on the East Coast, yeah. having a great time watching and having a great time texting you. So, But uh, Joseph Chen gets two matches in a row. Good for him. I mean, he's he's fun to watch. He's yeah, exciting. I was like, I was like that's kind of cool. Good for him. Yep. We also have Tynan Dalpur versus Jay Rodriguez coming off of Jay Rodriguez's performance this weekend. That this is this is a super I, interesting match <sighs> for a lot of reasons. I think it's a super. This is the exact match I think both guys need. Yeah. I think it is a very good benchmarking match for Tynan of like, hey man, here's a super dangerous, but sometimes. Like a guy you can put someplace and keep there if you can keep him there, yeah. but it also that's going to be dangerous the entire time and is notoriously pretty hard to put away. Yeah. Um, and for J Rod again, one of the best guys in the world in the gi, who is very rapidly improving but, in no gi. But who has beaten Tanya Dalbro? Very few people. Jason Gomez. That's it. That's end of <laughs> li- end of Jason Gomez. End of list. Yeah, th- that is it. I got the uh, the thing that Dan- Jason Gomez beat. Um, time down for with that underhook on the pass. Yeah, I got hit with that, and I was trying to tech through it, 
and I got stuck in the exact same way Tanya did, and I thought I was like, oh, this is what it felt like. <laughs> and uh, in, a, in a training session, you literally like, last night, be like, this is what it felt like. When, and that's my I was enti- when my entire career fell apart. No, this and is how it feels. No, I'm doing. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a guy in a gym and an open mat on a Sunday night. Um, but it was funny to watch the same. Like, oh, that's why he put his hand yeah. up like that to do that. It was it was a neat thing that I came across last night. Um, so that'll be a fun match. We'll talk yeah. about it and break that down more as we get closer to the event. Uh, we also have Colabate, and in, in parentheses, Imran has coming off of a leg injury. Didn't Pato break his leg? I don't know if that's public, but I think it is. I heard it. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I think you might have heard it from me. So okay. allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, uh, I think I heard it somewhere in else. training. Pato think, broke his leg. Yeah, uh, we don't know if that's real or not, but he Probably just is. Cole just did. Um, I think it was San Diego. I, One of the open whatever the, IBJJF? Wherever the IBJJF was this weekend and won. Okay. Um, and he's scheduled for Worlds. He's a black belt now? Yeah. He's okay. A black belt. That's what I thought. He's black... he got his black belt in Asia at like. Oh, yeah, he won Asian, the Asian Open. He Asian won the Asian Open, Open yeah. and then he got his black belt. I remember yeah, that now. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, he's uh, going against Ethan Collinston. Yeah, which Collinston's going to tear your foot off. <laughs> if there's a guy who's very good at the leg locks, it is Ethan Collinston. Well, and he's notoriously a very tough role. Yeah. Let's see it that way. Well, the funny thing is, Ethan Ethan has, like, the... Not the worst luck is the way we put it, but, like, they give Ethan no, a he, bunch of the guys at 6677 that are on the come up he has, consistently. He has the same luck as uh, as PJ Barch does at 77. They just give him, like, young killers constantly. Yeah. And like, it's, hey, man, and you're it's a not, veteran. You've been it, around for yeah, a while. Yeah, it's not that they're not... They're, they're great, and, yeah. they're, and they're young. It's not like they're that much older, but... He just gets hit with, he like... He gets with, the, like, I think of his, his matches with Cade. Yeah. Where it's like, they just keep giving you guys that are just, like, going to be not in your weight class soon. But yeah. right now, they're just <laughs> monsters coming up and young athletes with crazy gas and cardio. But you also got to watch, because Ethan... Is a super good veteran. Yeah. And yeah. is a very, very good grappler. Multiple time trials winner. Like, dude is phenomenal. This is a fun match. This is a very it exciting is. match. Um, I think we'll have a lot to break down when we get closer to this. Another one... It's a super. This is actually a really good card. Damn, I'm I'm jealous. You have tickets to this. Yeah, uh, we yeah. have Diego Pato yeah. versus Fabrizio Andre. Diego Pato has the 55 championship and the 45 championship. Yeah. This one is for the 45, yes. uh, 145 pound championship for who's number one. Um, Diego and Fabrizio Andre. I think that they've gone against each other before, but they offhand, had to. they had to. I have to have. They had to. Offhand, I can't remember it. We'll break it down again and get closer. That is a super exciting title fight. Um. You meant Fabrizio Andre, right? Yeah. For, okay, cool. Yeah, I was yeah. making sure it wasn't a different no, guy. No, because Fabrice, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, Google Docs likes to uh, correct some stuff yeah, here Yeah, it likes to correct, yeah, yep. Andre. Uh, yes. Another fun match we talked about, I think, last week. Uh, Jacob Couch versus Francisco Lowe at middleweight. That will be a lot of fun. And Victor Hugo versus Luke Griffith has also been announced. So that'll be a fun card. You'll be at that card. I'll be at home texting texting Me you in the, in the group chat about I think it. I'm, I, I think I'm like front row in the seats, so... You can even see me. Hell yeah. You can wave at We'll get you a grappling grind shirt to wear. I have one. We'll get you another one. Yeah. I have Um, multiple of them. So that's fun. That's the card we have for now. Uh, Any other news other than you just got back from card jiu-jitsu? Is that thing on your neck healed up yet? I don't know. How's it look? Oh, it's it's healed now. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. We couldn't really talk about it last week. Miranda had this giant bruise yeah, on the I back of her neck from a, from, a from seat, one of the matches from a seatbelt. So in yeah. car jiu-jitsu. In so car I, jiu-jitsu. I went one and one on the weekend. Uh, won my first by like a face crank joke, <laughs> and then None of, training with you for a while. That doesn't surprise no, me. No, and it doesn't surprise anybody. I was like, I, was any, like, I can see it. Anybody who knows me is I was like, like, I can see that. She'll finish. just grab your head and try to yank it yep. off. So, mm-hmm. um, and then my second one, I lost to uh, seatbelt choke. Seatbelt choke. At least you lost something that's only illegal in car jiu jitsu. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. It was so, it, and it was like a punch choke out of it. So I couldn't like be angry because that's like the shit I do. And yes. I was like, yes, fuck, man, she just like fucked me over by my own game. Yep. But um, yeah. Big problem that I didn't think about until I got there and I realized is that uh, so I have little legs. I'm like a smaller person, but I have little legs. I can't touch the floor when I'm sitting in a car. Like I can't touch the floor, kind of like a toilet. Can't touch the floor in a toilet. So it's really hard to get like the oomph to get up out of your seat when you can't touch the fucking floor. That didn't, is interesting. Didn't think about we, that. We did a little training in like in the car yeah, before, but and we, yeah, that is a smaller car where you can touch your feet to yeah. it. But in the what is the it, car, it's it, a Nissan. It was a, a Scion. It a was Scion. a Toyota Scion. It was a, like a 2016 Toyota Scion, and I couldn't touch the floor. And like so, it, 
that second you immediately yes. went oh should i have to do and also yeah. they changed the hand position they changed you. the hand position like originally they were doing hands up and then hands up to un- unbuckle but they were doing hands up and then hands to your legs and then unbuckle and for whatever reason my brain went that's not the same thing that you practice miranda you don't know what you're doing all of a sudden and but anyway it was fun it was a good time i didn't really get hurt i got busted up a little really bit just hurt. because you get like crunched up in some weird yeah, spots yeah you're doing you're doing jujitsu you get you get a little banged up anyway yeah but, but it was great you um, going back i i would like to go back okay. uh we i think we had like 2100 views on our on our video like in 48 hours so okay yeah so anyway i am directed everybody here so if you're here hi what's up um <laughs> yeah, uh, you're from car jiu-jitsu if you're from car jiu-jitsu we what's actually, up this we, is the this is the show we've done for seven this years is, yeah this is the real this is the real jiu-jitsu that we talk about but not yeah. saying the car jiu-jitsu isn't real but no, it's just different it's no. it's a weird world let me tell you but it was a lot of fun i had a good time they took care of me really well um yeah. so i hope to go back i got to meet uh Mark Holman? Yep. Mark Holman did my uh, play-by-play from matches. He it's exciting. He made some really weird comments. Sometimes I'm like, what the hell? But I guess Mark whatever. Holman. Yeah. Like he, gets yeah. To, he gets to be Mark Holman. I'd on, 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 never... That's that's a cool feather in your cap. I've had a match commented yeah. on Mark Holman. Yeah. So that's cool. So it was a fun time. Sweet. But um, yeah. So hopefully I get to do that again. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, you can go to YouTube. Yep. The Card Jitsu page. It's Card Jitsu 6. It's a ladies card and two very large gentlemen. Two large German, the same car as we are. Gives you some, gives you some context yeah, for, for Miranda's yeah. size. So, anything else on that? Nope, that's it. All right, let's move into the recaps, Miranda. Let's do Five Pass Invitational 7 first. Okay, then ADXC. Then ADXC. I know where I want to start. We usually do it. I'm, 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 I'm pulling it out. Yeah. We're starting with Nick Rodriguez versus Mason Fowler okay. on this. Uh, big, Not biggest shocker. Something that surprised me greatly at the beginning of this is Mason Fowler is two pounds heavier than Nick Rodriguez. Nick Mason Rod- Fowler weighed in at say, 228. Rodriguez say, rolled at 226. I want to say Nick Rodriguez is slimming. He seems slimming. He, I thought he was 235. But I don't know if that's his hair because he also has like this like mag- He has the Ethan Kronstein mullet. Yeah, he has the, the magnificent mullet right now. So I didn't know if right. that made him look skinnier because of lo- how it I, is. I thought Nick Rodriguez was 235 for ADCC 2019. And like when I've interviewed him, it, he's also been eating a lot better because he was going to die. Because he was going to die. I forgot the cholesterol. <laughs> thing. Yeah, the cholesterol. When they realized they tested his blood, he was like, "Oh, I actually like need to change my yeah. diet because I Dude, have I t- high cholesterol." I did my blood work recently. My cholesterol sucks too. So eat, he- eat healthy. <laughs> Grappling are not sponsored by any meal companies. Just eat healthier. Eat a vegetable occasionally. Yeah, I try. So that's what I, I. I was really surprised that Mason Fowler was that big. Again, given the weight class that Fowler's in, he's now yeah. an under 99 for ADCC, previously an under 88, and I think that was kind of hard for him to make under 88. But I just didn't expect him to be that big, kind of given the game he plays. Like, he, I think he used to be smaller. I'm not used yeah. to him walking into this weight class. He looked comfortably sized to Nick Rodriguez, but the interesting thing is I think Nick Rodriguez's frame supports that weight better and the interesting thing is well Mason Fowler is more of a stockier gentleman like he yeah. puts it on like a like, a, like he's super strong us little uh limbed people put it on differently than yeah the lanky and Nicky Rodriguez has a little bit more of a lanky build to him mm-hmm. so he he also tends to carry a lot more weight in his chest it looks yeah. like um it, it was an interesting kind of parallel because they, they they were Nicky Rodriguez was actually the smaller guy in this matchup and that kind of threw me off when thinking about like, oh, they really, are. I mean, they were two pounds. They, yeah. they, they were the same and size. It was absolute, so it wasn't like anybody was cutting right. or doing anything um, like that. Mason Fowler had a really interesting game plan for this matchup. And I was most struck. So Nick Rodriguez wins this match by six points in overtime. It's non-scoring at the beginning for Fight Pass Invitational. Uh, it's none of the overtime shit where they start in a position. It is kind of like ADCC does it, except... The first round, however long the first round it's is, either eight or ten. Yeah, is it's no points. Yeah, it's eight minutes for a non um, title match. Yeah, and then it's yeah. ten minutes for the title matches. Yeah. Um, and then if there's no score, but it, it's no score, then they go into a scoring yeah. like standard. But they scoring. can get negatives while they're in that. First yes, and day. that will come into match, uh, come into effect in a later match. We'll yeah. talk about. Um, I like this. I thought it was good. I do like the ADCC points and no points in regulation, but I think it worked really well here. No, I like, think it. I think it works well. Yeah, it's easy to follow. It's like, hey, there's no score. Yeah. Then we move into yeah, the scoring the period. Only, yeah, the only issue I had with it is 
some of the negatives and how all that stuff works. But yeah, and that's something I think Fight Pass Invitational is still sort of working yeah. on. Well, it's been a kind of they had for a little they bit. had um, is Ricardo Almeida and somebody else as their uh, judges. Uh, I forget who. Louisa, yeah, who was it? Was it Louisa Montero or somebody like that? It was a woman. It was a woman. It was a woman and Ricardo. But I oh, like, I can hear. Uh, I see her face, and, and they I, can't, were, I can't get. The yeah, right it now. was. It, they both had you know years and years and years of jujitsu yeah. behind them. So, um, it, it was. It uh, wasn't that she didn't have experience. Experience. It was just. It's a new rule for set. S- for some of them, I felt like they got a bunch of warnings before they would get a negative, and others just got negatives. Yeah. Um, and that could also be a rough thing because I feel like, or it could be you can't hear it, and they are getting it actually. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly. A lot of extra. I generally thought I like I I like. But I wasn't this really, ang- but I wasn't really angry at any of them either. No, I think they're no. all reasonable. Yeah. Um, I like this. I hope they keep it very similar to this. Yeah. I think this is a great way to do overtime. Um, I think the scoring in overtime is like, hey, if you can get something done, it goes and then it goes to the decision. Yeah. We don't do a weird starting them in a not even position. I think I don't really no, like that. No, and I like I like the scoring idea of it because yeah. I think that um, for a match like this, no yeah. score in regulation. Like I would give the regulation to Nick Rodriguez. Matt Fowler had some good moments here, but in the overtime, Nick Rodriguez very clearly meets criteria to score points. He gets the pass and he gets the mount. He scores six points, and then it's, it's kind of, very easy to give him the win. It's kind of funny there. that this is kind of the same way he did his last match mm-hmm. at Fight or at Fight Pass Invitational, mm-hmm. as he waits till overtime and then just points point plays people. Yeah. Well, he kind of had a similar. So in this match, uh, this is Nick Rodriguez body lock passing Mason Fowler. Mason Fowler throwing up rubber guard. I think like eight times. Yeah. Throwing up the rubber guard. And then Nick at Rodriguez the be- at the very beginning, he like he the first def- three yeah, he were def- really good, yeah. and then he gets one Oma Plata attempt on Nick Rodriguez that was yeah. good. That Nick Rodriguez is a freak athlete and very good and rolled correctly. He rolled yeah. through. He pulls out and forces Mason Fowler back into the guard. Mason Fowler did a great job of wrestling up, but he gets stifled and gets turned back over by Nick Rodriguez. Like Nick Rodriguez is, it, they're pretty actually even on. Um, like intensity of movement. Like Fowler is actively working from the bottom for many po- many times to get things moving, get things going. And Rodriguez is actively looking for passing attempts using the body lock. He's not just sitting there and camping. Like the, they are both actively doing stuff. No, I was happy with the pace. And he actually, um, he takes him down twice. Yeah. Like he keeps on, he tries like the, um, he wrestles up twice. Mason Fowler. Mason Fowler yeah. does later in the, uh, in the match. Mm-hmm. Um, so that might be what you're talking about when you were when you were saying that he, it seemed like he had one plan, and when that one plan started to kind of crumble, mm-hmm. he didn't have a backup plan. Yeah, to kind we were of talking about to. the pre-show, so yeah. it was. I I thought that Fowler did a really good job initially, like in the first couple of rubber guard attempts into the Oma Plata yeah. in that transition or into the wrestle up, he was doing well, and then it seemed like he fatigued a little bit. And Nick Rodriguez figured out what Fowler's yeah. game plan was. When it cool, this is how I make adjustments to beat this. And those two things kind of happen at the same time. And by the fourth rubber guard attempt that we saw from Fowler from the guard, we saw Nick Rodriguez go, okay, fi- he figured out how but to I deal feel with like, it. He got his chest up higher. But I feel he like opened. at that point also was when um, Mason started wrestling up. Yeah. And he would wrestle up and he would take him down. And he put him to his ass like twice, mm-hmm. which I was completely but surprised But he could never about. really like fully settle him. And Rodriguez would always get up, always get away, always do that tech yeah. out that he does so well. And then... He would counter Fowler yeah. to get Fowler back down and get Fowler to scrambling back into a guard position. Yeah. Um, it was it was an interesting dynamic, and I was I was really impressed with as I kind of always am with Nick Rodriguez's consistent technical adjustments and like tactical game. Like he is never really out of position to get countered. The two rubber guard attempts and the one that was like nice for the Oma Plata for that Fowler got. Yeah. Rodriguez was just passing, and then he had. Fowler was still very strong in that position and could turn the angle to beat Rodriguez. Yeah. But it wasn't because Rodriguez was out of position. It was no. Fowler was making activity happen. And then later in the match, Fowler got tired by about, got a little more tired, and Rodriguez count, figured out how to counter that. And you'd see uh, Nick Rodriguez break off the bot, break off the regard by getting close enough and posturing Fowler yeah. up. And then he would get into that low half guard passing position that he is one of the best in the world at passing. And he would start high stepping Fowler's outside leg that was still trapped in the half guard. And eventually, a couple of times, he would get by. He would force a wrestle up. Fowler would usually get back to the guard. Um, and then later in the in the overtime, yeah. we saw it just we saw Fowler go for the overguard. Uh, 
Nick Rodriguez pretty easily have well, figured it out at this point. Yeah, and at that point, later in the match, what he started doing was he was also blocking the inside leg. So the, the top leg that was coming up and over the shoulder, his other leg earlier, he was allowing Mason to pull his knee to his chest. So when that leg came up, he was all crunched up around him. Yeah. And later on, it was almost like he was going for, um, you know, the... Dog, the dog bar. The dog bar. Yeah, yeah. I was like trying to think of its name. Yeah, that low, that the, low knee bar. You it was almost, and I that wasn't what he was going for, but it's he, a similar hip. But position. he was trapping that bottom leg yeah. so that even so that Mason had to use more of his um, flexibility to get that leg up and over, as opposed to um, him being able to pull both yeah. of his knees up and go up. Like biomechanically, um, it was a worse position to have to fight from, and you're tired. Yeah. So those two things, those a bunch of things in combination. Yeah. Allow Rodriguez to the then later. And I don't be know. Successful. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if that was a t- like that was a Mason Fowler. I'm tired thing, or if that was a Nikki Rod. It looked like both to me. I'm going to trap your leg thing. It I, looked I, like I, could, I didn't know which was. It looked like an adjustment from because Rodriguez like every time that Fowler would throw the rubber guard, yeah, we'd see Rodriguez make a make a di- slightly different adjustment to how he was dealing with it. And That's like, true. What That's he true. does later, like initially he's lower down in the body, and when he breaks it later in the match, Rodriguez has gotten much higher up on Fowler's chest, so Fowler has to bring his leg up higher, and you see Rodriguez like open up his chest oh, okay. and sort of able to like pull off where Fowler like physically kind of can't hold him in that position anymore. It was it was really good game planning. I just. I would have loved to see Fowler play a different guard after like the fourth or fifth time. But isn't that like his jam? It is, but it was, you could see it becoming less and less successful throughout the match. And the thing about this particular guard, and this maybe it's a style matchup thing, is when you get the rubber guard kind of shucked off like Nick Rodriguez was doing, you end up in Nick Rodriguez's best passing position. Yeah. That low body lock half guard, like... Your the way Victor Hugo beat Nick Rodriguez is he never let him lock his hands around him. He has and he has the limb length, the leg length to be able to push yeah. Rodriguez off, and has some other tricks from the guard based on some technical decisions he does, planks in his game, and some attributes he has of just being an enormous heavyweight, like two sixty. Yeah. Um, that Fowler just it doesn't have available to him. But when you broke the rubber guard, you had Nicky Rod. At time, like being able to spend time in his body lock yeah. and like figure it out, I think a different guard potentially would have given Fowler different opportunities to get something going after the third or the second of a plot attempt didn't work. Rodriguez had it figured out. And we saw Fowler continue to go to the same thing. The wrestle attempts were great. The wrestle ups yeah. were great, but as Fowler got tired. But yeah, wrestle ups are horrible when you're and, tired. And Nick Rodriguez is faster. Yeah. And like you could see that Nick Rodriguez was the faster guy in these yeah. scrambles. And it was like, okay, Nick Rodriguez is insanely hard to take down anyway. And then you're trying to wrestle up scramble with yeah. a guy that is really good at that position in the first place from a top player perspective and quicker than you to get behind you and you could see it fatiguing Fowler even more it, again yeah. it was a beautiful performance from both guys we were also trying to figure out if Nikki Rodriguez shaves his legs or not. we spent way too much time on the pre-show <laughs> like doing frame by frame of looking and eventually we figured out, oh he has a hair on his yeah, legs go because because Kai Otera, which is Mason Fowler's coach yeah. um he's very loud so you very can... loud which is what you want at a high level from a coach. Yeah. You want a high level guy a like pitch, Kyle. It's a pitch that you can always find the voice. He's a very distinct voice. Yeah. And so he's he's yelling about Nicky Rod being greased. Yeah. And then later in, later in the match, he's uh, the like... The funny one, the funny one that everybody laughed at was he goes, he's so wet. And then everybody in the whole yeah, the room that started was funny. laughing. <laughs> um, but at one point, you could hear Damien Anderson, who was in the corner of Nick Rodriguez. Um, then Kyle was basically going like, look, stop the match. Give him 10 seconds. Dry him off. It's fine. Like, it's not yeah. going to stop the match. Just, just do it. Just dry him off. And Damien Anderson, for his guy, goes... Yeah. And rightfully so goes, yeah. they're not even slipping out in that position. Yeah. Like the thing that you are complaining about is not having a changeative effect on the match of like the position that Mason Fowler has Nick Rodriguez's yeah. leg in for this wrestle up. Rodriguez is not slipping out in that position. He is slipping out in the next transition after the thing is happening. Yeah. Even if his legs were greased, which they probably weren't. It wouldn't matter, and it was just very funny to hear. Yeah, it wasn't like the, it wasn't well. like they were going after his legs. Really, it, no, like, I didn't see anything here that in my head would indicate anything yeah. abnormal for Nick Rodriguez. Like he is notoriously from guys that we know have trained with him. He's just a slippery dude. Yeah. Like it, some guy, and we've trained with guys, you've trained with certain guys that are like, Oh, this guy's just particularly kind of slippery. Yeah. And some guys, certain guys like they don't sweat a lot and they just are super sticky. Even like 10 rounds in, you're like, Oh, yeah. you're a little dry. That's weird. Yeah, there's a realm. Nicky yeah. Rod is just a, a slipperier dude. 
I don't think it really mattered in this match because Fowler was getting up, he was getting on the hips, he was getting yeah. in the positions, but it was just a funny wrinkle in the match to hear Kayo and Damian Anderson yeah. like kind of chipping at each other, yeah. chirping at each other during during the matchup. Because um, it's Apex, so it's super quiet, so you can hear everything. Yeah. Um, but overall, it was a really fun matchup. I think technically we saw like Mason Fowler is a phenomenal technician, and for Nick Rodriguez to be able to deal with him like he did, and like pre and be in the driver's seat most of the match, and then yeah. on the counters being ahead of the counters, like didn't make any technical mistakes here. No. Played this perfectly. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to see some more from Fowler, to just because I think Fowler is a great technician, and I really like watching his game versus the bigger guys. I wanted to see a different piece of his game to see how Nick Rodriguez yeah. would deal with that. Maybe you think is maybe less of me criticizing his game plan, and more like as a fan, I wanted to see a little more because I have a huge amount of respect for how Fowler plays the game, and he typically will have an answer to every challenge we've seen. But there, him. there's probably a reason why he's playing the game he was playing. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's probably partially Kyo t- telling you Who to do that. has but. phenomenal game playing yeah. and has got Fowler to this yeah. far. You know, it, there's a reason why this guy's at the top. I was just very impressed with both guys' performances, but really impressed with Nick Rodriguez's ability to counter, counter, counter. And then that beautiful passing sequence to mount that doesn't let Fowler trap his leg in the half guard immediately. Eventually, yeah. Fowler does, but it was just a great performance. And then with a minute and 20 seconds left, not a lot of guys in the world can score six points on Nick Rodriguez, and so Rodriguez just kind of had to stalemate Fowler out in that time, and it was a it, it was a fun match. It was I think deservedly a main event. It does unfortunately bounce Fowler into a losing streak, yeah, or not a streak, but it, his first loss of a pass yeah. invitational, which potentially makes that Gordon Ryan match harder to organize. I don't really care. I want to see Fowler versus Gordon Ryan. Yeah, we've seen Nick Rodriguez versus Gordon Ryan. We've seen it. I want to. I want Fowler to be able to get that shot. Stylistically, it's a very different matchup. Yeah. I think the way that Fowler plays is really interesting, and I don't. I for taking this matchup, I don't think he should be penalized by not getting the opportunity at Gordon because styles make fights, and I think the style with him and Gordon is really interesting, and I want to see it. I think the dudes earned it. Yeah. So I think so. Um, I, again, would love to see Nick Rodriguez against either um, Gordon Ryan, Mason Fowler, kind of Duarte. All those yeah. things are re- all the guys, the top guys in his divisions. I think. An interesting match now for Nick Rodriguez is potentially um, Luke Griffith. So that, you have anything yeah. else on this match? No, but that does make well, that's a great segue yeah. into the next match we're going to talk about, um, which is Kind Duarte versus Luke Griffith. This is also an absolute uh, Luke Griffith. This is also an absolute match. Um, Luke Griffith, rear naked chokes Kind of Duarte. He's also six five, two forty nine. Yeah, and Duarte is two twenty eight. But again, it's absolute, and Duarte's. Been an absolute He's champ. He's 20 pounds heavier than Nikki Rodriguez's. That's crazy. <laughs> More than 20 pounds, actually. Yeah. Because Rodriguez was 26. Yeah. So, uh, this was beautiful game planning from Luke Griffith and New Wave team. Yeah. And you can hear, listen to Luke Griffith's post-fight interview to understand the game planning. He did exactly what he said they had game plan for. He was like, look, we know Kynan is aggressive with collar ties. Yeah. We know he comes in. You know he does X, Y, and Z on the feet. We know that if we prevent him from getting this kind of underhook that he likes, that he's not going to be able to take us down. Yeah. We know that once he gets – he's done that and we've stalemated him a little bit, he will get tired. He will overcommit for this, and I can shuck him by. I can then take him down, get his back, and we're going to choke him. That is exactly what he did in the match. He almost did the uh, the Roberto Jimenez, like – Double under, yeah, kind of. Double under shook. Very rare. But it was from standing. Ever. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was the way he drives um, kind of up. Yeah. It was really interesting. He drives him close to the edge of the mat. But it's also because he's, he was a, like a foot taller than Yeah, he's enormous. Was. I yeah. think he's like, I think he's like six or, I he's think. He's six five. I looked it I up. I think kind of is close to six feet. Yeah. Because he's kind of like, he's much bigger than me, yeah. but he's not like. Like, Luke and Big Dan and, like, uh, some other guys are, like, they tower over me in a weird way. Yeah. Kind of was much bigger than me what's when it, I interviewed What's him. it called is like that? Um, Warzinski. Yeah, he's tall. I saw him in an IBJ Jeff, and I was like, damn, that's a big man. Yeah, I realized, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, medium heavy. I didn't realize that was a big man. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I don't have a lot of technical insight to give. It was Luke broke it down in the post fight. Like yeah. that is what he did. I and will give Kynan credit though. Kynan, Kynan, Kynan tried Kynan, Kynan tried to get off the mats. Yeah, he tried to roll very off. Clearly. He tried to roll off the mats so that he could get out of that back attack, which is great. Well, because you saw in some of the other matches when they got really close to the edge, if they said stop before they established a position, they would start them back on their feet. Yeah, because they did that because it's an elevated other, stage, yeah. which is. Elevator stages are always kind of weird for how you play that. I think yeah. this is a go- as good of answer as any because yeah. you can't let them fall off the stage. It is such a safety issue with the floors of athletes yeah. falling over the head. And, like, you can have career-ending injuries. But you, but you 1,000, you, you saw Kynan. Oh, yeah, you saw him hit, turn his hips and, like, turn try to, like, scoot. and try to scoot. And you saw the the ring staff on the side, like, push him in a little yeah. bit. And I was like, ooh, that is cold. Yeah. Um, I thought one of the other things that was interesting in the match was, aside from the the technique to take him to take Kynan down— um, which was, again, beautiful game planning. We heard Gordon Ryan, who is Luke Griffith's teammate, on yeah. commentary. I thought it was very interesting that usually Gordon on commentary, he's great on commentary, usually who will provide a bunch of technical information about what's happening, what's ha- what he's doing, and like the whole sequence that's happening for a finish, yeah. prior to a finish. With this, he didn't do any of that. He was like, oh yeah, Luke's got this. I know he's got this. And I went... How monstrous is Luke Griffith in the room that Gordon Ryan's just going, oh, yeah, he's got it. I yeah. know he's got it. It's like, oh, that means that you're he, he's either on your back or you see him on people's back and you're seeing the position that his, he's in the body triangle or the hips or the way that he has your shoulders. Like you're seeing something about the way that Luke has this position right now in kind of Duarte where you know that he's going to finish. Yeah. That says something about the guy in the room that you're seeing that Gordon Ryan goes, yeah, you know, he's, he's got it right now. There's no technical, there's no, because usually with his guys, he'll, even with his own team, he will talk about what they're doing, what he wants to see, like he'll do commentary. Yeah. With this, he just went, oh yeah, he's got him. And for me, that is really unusual for Gordon. I think we're going to see a lot more rear naked chokes like this from Luke Griffith in the next two years. Oh, probably. Because this is, I think this is a position he's probably becoming a specialist in. In a real, you know, we got not becoming like he's had a very good rear naked choke for a while now, but just that little wrinkle of like Gordon not giving commentary and going, yeah, he's got it, is very, very telling for me from the best guy in the world. I agree. So, I agree. It was neat. Um, I want to see Nick Rodriguez versus Luke Griffith. Uh, I think honestly, any of those guys in the top five or the top ten that are on the that are main of any of the fight pass cards, I would love to see throw at each other. I love the fight pass. Uh, rule set. I like how they do it. I'd love to see him go in ADCC. I think it's all great. Um, but yeah, this was a super surprising uh, like result. result. Yeah, I think we picked both easily picked kind of Duarte here. Yeah, I think in a rematch that could go differently. But man, Luke played this super well, and if he can do that going into ADCC, he it could be a. And he's also oh oh oh, he's at under ninety nine now. Yeah. This throws a huge wrench because it's him, it's Fowler, it's Mergali, and Duarte at under 99. Those are your front runners at under 99. Is Nicky Rod going to plus 99? He's plus 99. He's always plus 99. But look how much he weighs. Is he going under? <laughs> I mean, Ooh, I didn't he's, think about that. He's, he's, just, he's six pounds off yeah. from being under 220. But I think his game works better with the heavier guys. Yeah, but he can. He just saw what he did to yeah. Mason Fowler. I'm curious. So that, regardless, that that under nine nine division for ADCC with this win over the champion. Have they announced what Nikki Rod is in? They I thought they had. I thought they had. I thought they announced him. They announced him like two. Oh, weeks they ago. did under not. No, no. Where is it? What does it say? Sorry, I have to wait. For no, the it's why we gotta wait for the thing. I have to, to wait for the thing to go through. Because he's got to be plus. He is at. Plus yeah, 99. plus ninety nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it, the end with the, with this win over the champion at the weight class. Yeah. It'll be very interesting to see where Luke Griffith sits in the in the seating and generally speaking. Yeah. Uh, how this bracketing will go. So I think I think again it'll be Duarte. It'll be Luke opposite sides. Um, top top seeds or like your top four seeds, and I think it'll be Margali and it'll be Fowler on your corners. Yeah. Is what I think it'll be based on who's in the bracket. But this is a extremely uh, interesting result and a huge upset. And congrats to Luke Griffith. Like, dude beat the ADCC champion by choke in a couple of minutes. And he's a brown belt. Technically. Yeah, I hear that bullshit. 
Uh, next match I want to talk about is Giancarlo Bodoni versus Gabriel Argus, who for some reason... The entire last two weeks we've been previewing this. I keep calling Gabriel Argus Gabriel Almeida. Yeah, it's not. not um, and I keep referring to Gabriel Almeida like, nope, this is Gabriel so Argus. So guess what Gabriel Argus's nickname is? It is... I know it. It's Frodo. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Because he had the same yep. haircut yep. as Guy from Lord of the Rings. Guy from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Elijah Wood. I, Frodo. Frodo from Lord of the Rings. I don't know yes. who, who Elijah played, Wood. Elijah Wood. Okay. Yes, Frodo. Um, so Frodo. <laughs> so Frodo. Gabriel Argus, yeah. who is not Gabriel Almeida, who I keep messing up. So apologies for last week's show. I, yeah. I was previewing this like it was going to be Gabriel Almeida, the two-time uh, trial silver medalist that got yeah. invited to ADCC. I think I did too. Because I, cool, I just, I just, I just went. You with went it. with it. This is Gabriel <laughs> Argus. Uh, very different guy. Kind of similar matchup, honestly. Yeah. Um, very similar, like, level of grab. Very, very high. Though I think Argus, Argus is very good. But I think Argus is more gi heavy. Yeah. I think he's much more of a gi practitioner. Yeah. Gabe well, I made it still pretty heavy in the gi, but yeah, more, a little more yeah. no gi. Um, this was impressive. This was really impressive for Giancarlo. Giancarlo gets a Renega choke from the back, but is really in control yeah. most of the match here. Um, I think he was a little larger than Gabriel Argus, but they both weighed in. Uh, yeah, around the same. It yeah. wasn't. It, it I, wasn't an absolute. Yeah, match. normally I don't write down their weights. I wrote down a couple of their weights only because it was such a ridiculous number, or it was one of those things I was like, "Holy shit, such and so weighs this much weight," or right. it was somebody that we normally screw up how much they weigh, or we yeah. normally have the conversation like Oliver Taza that we're gonna hit, where I'm always like. Isn't Oliver Taza like 140 pounds? And then you're like, no, he's like 190. And I'm like, nah, he's like, you know, yeah. and it becomes. It comes that conversation. Yeah. Uh, Bodoni's really good. Yeah. What do you What do you want? He uh, he controlled Gabriel Argus for the entirety of the match, pretty much. Yeah. Um. What, yeah. Where do you, What do you? What technical information do you have here? I was kind of impressed with the hand fight on the yeah. back, but once once uh, Bodoni got. Argus is back, but it was just inside hand fight, pull the hands down, hand, other hand comes across, yeah. top of the shoulder, he walks it up, and then he finishes. Yeah. And that was, it was a very quick finish, uh, because we know Bodoni has it a crazy squeeze, but it, I kind of learned less about Giancarlo's game than I had expected, um, because yeah. he really just, it was, it was a standard Bodoni performance on top, getting over, and then getting beautiful back take. Yeah. It, look, go back and watch his trials matches. Let's, but this is what Bodoni looks like when he's on. Yeah. Taking the back, getting the choke. I agree. I agree. Anything else? Nope. Bodoni's really good. Uh, next one I want to talk about. I want to talk about. No, we're talking about Hanato. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is quick. Okay. Hanato Canudo versus Aaron, Aaron Wil Wilson. Aaron Wilson. Aaron Wilson. This is the third, possibly third match they time they went against each other. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they went against each other in 3G. Third Coast Grappling 8. Uh, uh, this was... 2021. Was this the Absolute or was this the Welterweight GP? I th it's 10... I think it was an Absolute. I don't, I don't know, know why. It says 10-23-2021. That's when it happened. That's what I... Might have been one of the Kumites. But anyway. He oh, won no, Third Coast Grappling 8. It was Third Coast Grappling 8. Never mind. Yeah. Sorry. So he won gold score. And then they have an awesome match. If you have flow... Go and see. I might have been at that event. Fight to win Pro 16. They went against each other in the Gi at Brown Belt, and Canuto hit the most pretty flying armbar yeah. in 2018. Mm -hmm. Long time ago, back when Fight to Win had every single high profile match you could Yeah, ever but they, they were the Super Fight promotion. Yeah, it was before, um, before there was, was number else. one and all these other events. It was years ago. I mean, stealing. 2018, that was like the. We, we... They started stealing everybody. No, it wouldn't have been 16. Because 2018, we were doing the show when we started at Fight to Win, uh, 52. Oh, okay. So that that number might not be correct. Ah, uh, that but was regardless. It was brown belt. That was what I got off the internet. Hmm. So and I so this it. is the third matchup. Um, it's a very pushy match. Yes. And then Aaron Wilson gets a really nice uh, single leg that he's about to treetop, and Hanato Kanuto goes, "I feel like Kung Lee right now." See. Fight to win Pro 16. From, yeah, it's 2016. Oh, ha. Yeah, so the year's wrong. So my year's so, yeah, wrong. Yeah, so this is prior to us doing the show, so 2016. 
Yeah, but yeah. it was it was a it's a nice yeah. So it's a nice arm bar. This one, and you you kind of said it best on the pre-show when we were talking about this. Renato Canuno. So typically, how you do a scissor leg takedown, which yeah. is kind of what he hits here, you drop to your outside hip, and then you sit them backwards, and you bring them into the legs yeah. for the heel hook, and then you heel hook them. Watch Gary yeah. Tonin versus Edmund Najmi. That is like at ADCC. That is like the best example yeah. of what that technique looks like. This was like. The same thing, but if you took that and you took a uh, like an Imanari, an Imanari roll and combined them, yeah, it's like their baby because he almost drops full off on his head shoulder. He drops inside of Aaron Wilson's body, so Aaron Wilson has Canuto's leg, and Canuto a, a on like counter, a single leg. Yeah, and he's like common counter to this is that scissor take down yeah. the leg, take him down, but Canuto doesn't do the scissor leg. He drops underneath almost like he's going to do a flower or like an imanari yeah. and he lands on his inside shoulder like on his neck rolls underneath of aaron wilson yeah and then traps both legs and heel hooks yeah and we watched it and Miranda's like yo did you see that and I, I watched i was, yeah. I was in the process of like replaying yeah. it live and i was like that was crazy yeah um it was fight of the night and submission of the night which i think is re- maybe not fight of the night I think there were. I think, no, I think it was. Well, I think submission was, of the night for sure. I think it was both, but I think they were multiple. If that yeah. makes any sense, because he got like fifty k for it. Which is all. So. That's a that is yeah. that is a fifty k sub. Like yeah. to hit an in. And if you remember what Kung Lee used to do back before he was in the UFC, he would do like a teep counter. And it was like a reverse teep counter. And he'd hit you in the chest with his leg and throw you back. Yeah. That's kind of what this reminded me of, more than a scissor leg yeah. takedown, because he brings Aaron Wilson. Like in a, he brings him down in, a, in an interesting way yeah. underneath towards the front. Um, this is something I would never want anyone to do to me, but no, man, it was, it was it exciting seems, to watch. It seems scary because it also seems like is they're going under, like if you don't tuck and roll well, you're going to face yeah. plant and then have your leg go the opposite direction. Yeah, and also, but we know Canuto is really good at the yeah. under. Like look at look at him in Thurco Grappling and other matches. He yeah. will throw these arm bars underneath, um, even in Nogi. Dude, so think about him. Versus our man that comes earlier into the card, who also likes to jump the arm bars, Peter Frank. Peter Frank. The two of them. I would watch Canuto versus the, Peter Frank. That would be them, a fun ass match. The two of them could have the dueling flying arm bars. They might like scissor take down each other. That would be a really fun matchup, actually. Or just land completely. That would be fun. I, I'm down for that match. That's a good match. Yeah. They both got wins here. Uh, next match. So anything else on that? No. It was super fun. Yeah. Uh, Hernando Canuto is always a highlight real guy. Always super fun to watch. His wife was also on the card. Uh, next match we had Jay Rodriguez versus Jonathan Gracie. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you had the note. <laughs> because, because I sent this message to the group and I'm like, okay, dude. Um, no, we, we got a picture. I sent the picture because somebody either did Jay Rodriguez dirty or He's making a joke. I don't know which one it is, but it said he was a 2021 Grappling Industries and Naga gold medalist. And then Miranda has a note. Ha 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 ha. Because I am all, I'm a Grappling Industries absolute gold medalist. <laughs> yeah. And I was like. But it's 2021. It's three years I ago. Know. It's not even a recent Grappling Industries. Like, Jeremiah hasn't done a Grappling Industries. And since that then, was the last one he did. Since then, he's won trials. He's won trials. <laughs> he's been to ADCC. He's like. Like so, invite. I don't know. I, I'm thinking this is a joke. I'm it thinking they asked him like because like I'm when, thinking that's a B team guy. When that I did, he filled the format and went at yeah, 24. Yeah, well, gold when medals. I did, when I did, uh, when I did card jujitsu, I couldn't think of anything. So I sent a message to one of my friends. I'm like, hey, what should I put down as like my accreditations? Because I don't know what to talk about myself. And so that I was like, dude, this next time I do card jujitsu, I'm gonna bring out my like my naga and grappling. Indi- I'll be like, I'm a 2008 grappling industries. You know, gold medalist. Not saying it's white belt, but still, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was just so funny to have him walk out, and you're like, like Jeremiah has like has like big things that he's like, he's yeah. a quintet champion, he's a trials yeah. champion, like he's been to ADCC. It was just very funny to have him walk out, and that be the bumper for him. Twenty twenty one. Well, and then she's Yeah, gold and then we're like, okay, maybe they can't mention uh, ADCC because and then of, all the other matches yeah. later they mention ADCC. ADCC. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's not that. <laughs> so it, but was, it was it was very funny. Um, this match was the beginning of the match was Jay Rodriguez playing very well on top, and he goes against countering. Jonathan's Gracie. Yeah. I don't think we ever said that. Beautifully countering Jonathan's Gracie, and then late in the match, it was you saw kind of the veteran savvy of Jonathan's Gracie come in, 
and you saw him be able to slow Jay Rodriguez down, yeah. control him, sweep him over, get him to the bottom, and then be able to kind of really stalemate Jay Rodriguez, which is a problem that we've seen Jay Rodriguez have. Now, I liked in this match because what we saw from Rodriguez is we saw his ability to come out earlier in the match and, like, put up good offense, put yeah. up good passing, put up good positional work on the top, you know, look to pass, look to stay in dominant position on John Tess Gracie, who has really good guard, um, really good top game too, but is very, very savvy and very dangerous in a lot of places. We'll play De La Huva, we'll play deep half. Yeah. And we saw Jay Rodriguez deal with all that and not get put into a hole early in the match, which is sometimes typical of him. Yeah. And then we kind of saw that late where John Tess Gracie figured out where Jay Rodriguez was getting out, figured out kind of how he was tacking out, figured out where his hips were going to be, figured out where his legs were going to be, and knew that he couldn't have this, like, physical firefight yeah. with him. And, like, okay, I've got to beat this guy, like, with jiu-jitsu and more technically and slow him down. And that's what he did. That's how he scores. And that's, it. what, ends 8-2? to two? Yes, 8-2. to two. And it looked like, again, another kind of learning... Um, it looked like a veteran fighter versus yeah. a more raw fighter in Jay Rodriguez. And it was kind of the matchup we talked about. Like, this is very much the outcome we could see. Uh, Jay Rodriguez has a really funny buggy choke at the end, but it looked like John Gracie was yeah, he was not worried. He was not concerned about it. He was um, up on points. He's not going to tap to that with 10 seconds left. Um, yeah, it was... Do you, do you want to get into more of the technique behind the match, or do you have any other thoughts? I mean, we could go over, like, the little sequence that kind of broke J-Rod, I would say. Yeah. Which was, um, John Tess Gracie comes up to dogfight from, which is like, uh, when you have an overhook and underhook, and you're both kind of belly to the mat, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Almost like you would do it. It's a wizard battle, yeah, essentially. So, yeah. He comes up to that position, and, uh, John Tess does what I think a lot of people should do from this position, which is he jumps the arm. Oh, yeah, this sequence. Um, that was nice. Yeah, which is he jumps the arm. And I... I ref- so you can get an arm bar off the top here if you are the guy with the overhook. Yeah. You can slide up and you can go into like a door chalk arm bar where you have one leg behind their head and one yeah. leg in the armpit with a knee in their armpit. Yeah. And you slide off the top and you can belly down arm bar someone here. Yeah. And uh, he kind of starts that... Um, he Gava does this a lot. He does. He yeah. does. And I when I was I was roughing this weekend, I saw so many times that people should have done this and they didn't do it. And it was like irritating me in my brain. And I'm trying to ref and not be, you know, judgmental. But... Um, but you are. So... But I am. So he goes and jumps the arm. Um, when J-Rod tries to not have his arm attacked, when he goes to defend, he basically sweeps himself. He goes down... Yeah. Um, because you have to get John your arm back, just, so you get your arm and ba- back flat to the mat. And John just goes, "Cool, I wasn't, I wanted the arm, but I'm not like married yeah, to the arm. Yeah. I'll take the positional dominance and here." That, and, gets up. and that shows both um, his ability to. I, I think this shows really well somebody who plays a point game and knows how to play a point game. Yeah, because it's not him going you know, all out on that arm bar and mm-hmm. like going like for broke. He's not losing and, and coming losing to the bottom. position. Yeah. He's going into the arm bar. It doesn't work. He goes to the position that gives him yeah. the points and allows him to have the control. Mm-hmm. And that's something I think that point fighters do a lot better than people who do just sub only. Because yeah. people do sub only will put themselves in a shit position because they know they can get then out of it. Because it doesn't matter. Yeah. But like when here, when there are points on the line and when yeah. you're later in the match, it's very valuable for John Gracie to be scoring points in these sequences. Yeah. And this and all and this all happens in um in overtime yeah. where it is a point. Where there, uh, there are points yeah. involved. It was, again, it was John Gracie played it extremely well. And I think from the dogfight, I think we're... I'm always surprised... We don't see more people throwing this armbar from the dogfight. I think it's a great. It it's is a, a great, great armbar, and we see a lot of people at the high level finish this armbar frequently when people really lay yeah. into the dogfight and are willing to wrestle up because they're gonna be loose in there and their yeah. arms gonna be extended. It's not gonna be fully committed all the time. It, it was great. It yeah. was a great transition. Um, but uh, yeah, it was really. It it still showed the kind of areas where Jay Rodriguez is raw. Also, the areas where he's really good, like the positional work on the top initially to, oh, pull, yeah. to prevent the sweeps the, from Donald and, Gracie were great. And the defense he had from the arm from the arm lock attack yeah. was great. Um but all kind of things we knew he was already yeah. really good at. In these other sequences, like late when you're he's getting put, he's being forced to try to buggy choke people. Like these are also things that we've seen him be successful and unsuccessful with. And it mm-hmm. kind of makes you I'm very curious how the tiny match goes. Yeah. Like I I think the tiny match could look very similar to this. 
Um, or potentially with Tynan being a little even more positionally dominant. Yeah. I think Tynan is very much unwilling to get in more firefights with Rodriguez in a way that Jonathan Gracie will yeah. sort of play into a little more. Um, but it, I, I want to see more development from Jay Rodriguez yeah. for matchups like this um, because you're going, to, you're going to ADCC, like guys like Jonathan Gracie are going to, that's how the guys yeah. play. So it was great. Again, credit to Jonathan Gracie. Really, really good. Played it perfectly. You know, very dominant scoring b- victory and beat uh, Jay Rodriguez. Next match, we have Ashlyn O'Connell versus Raquel Canuto. This is women's 145. Um, this was, damn. This is re- Canuto looked phenomenal. She did. This entire did. match. Bell to bell. Yeah. Really. I think I don't think there was a really phenomenal moment from uh, Ashlyn against Canuto here. Yeah. Other than, like, great, great defensive work. But Canuto was just kind of much like her husband, like, on the defensive, on the attack, yeah, played exactly. more of a positional game than Canuto, than than or Canuto, both Canuto, yeah. than um, her husband, than Renato will play. Yeah, but still, um, she was so dominant that Aslan O'Connell gets a negative for not as urgently defending the back mount. Yeah, and she just like willing to ride out the points, for, ride out the yeah. time for back mount, which yeah. I thought was really, I liked it. Uh, but it was just funny. It, it's always funny to see people get negatives in positions they're not dominant. I yeah. think the sport needs more of it because plenty of people will will ride it out. Will just ride or stall yeah. in position, like yeah. oh, just stall in bottom side control because I can keep my arms in. Yeah. I think there does need to be like it's a two way street for that. It is just very funny because it is very uncommon. Yeah. To see that because you can tell she's just riding it out. Um, what does Canuda end with? What twelve points? Twelve. It says yeah. twelve, but I think it's a I think it's a lot more than twelve. Yeah, because it, the last sequence is a lumberjack sweep to mount, lands on Neil Belly, and then I think passes the guard, and like all those points weren't counted because they weren't. Yeah, they're during the fade out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, very, very yeah, dominant. I mean, it, victory from yeah. Raquel. Uh, I think they're really fun matchups for Raquel. She sits in that weird. She sits in a really weird bell curve of women's one forty five, where you have a lot of women that are like not not as good as Raquel. Yeah, and then you have a lot of women that are like. Top five in the world. Yeah. She, and there's a very, she very said she's, stiff curve there. She said she's going into retire into her retirement years. And I was like, damn, you just like fucked up somebody 20 years younger than you. Yeah. How is that going into your retirement years? Just pull a Lovato. Yeah. You know what? I'm still putting a good camps. <laughs> I'm going to come back out. I'll watch. I, 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 again, I love watching Raquel. I will never forget her. I forget Dude, how, old, how old is she? Dude, if I get... I think she's like mid thirties because oh, she's man. much. She's much older than Canuto. You know I think that... Canuto's late twenties. Fuck, man. Do you know what that means that if I when I get my black belt, I do Master Worlds. She's gonna be my. You run into Raquel. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. Oh, no, this is why we call Wait Miranda. Ashley O'Connell fucked me up. I can't imagine how Canuto would do. <laughs> oh, yeah, you went against her at trials, <laughs> yeah, didn't you? Did. You went against Ashley O'Connell at yeah. trials. So, so I yeah, I can't, can't imagine. Raquel I can't even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you pull Cravar and you're like, come on, uh, master. If I ever, if I ever get Cravar, I'm doing the same ponytails. You I'm gonna pony, the ponytails I'm gonna she does. put ponytails in just to be a retard. Oops, sorry, I wrong, won't bleep wrong it. word. I won't believe it. Yeah, um, my bad, guys. My bad. Um, yeah, because like we'll talk about Cravar here in the in the one of the later matchups. Like, yeah. oh, Cravar surprised me this weekend. Yeah. She is very, very good. Um, so that match again, Can- yeah. Canoe looked phenomenal. Uh, next match. We have Peter Frank versus Rafael Domingos. Uh, this was this was fun, dude. They both came in. They're walk-ins, man. So both I, guys having a good time. I think Rafael was trying to be. I think he was trying to be a um, like a ninja, but it didn't look like a ninja. Oh, uh, it was interesting. It was I think a, he was trying to be a ninja because he only had his eyes. He could only see his he eyes. He had like the ski was, mask on. Yeah, and he was yeah. covered. And he comes in, and then he does some like some like backflips and shit and crazy shit on the mat. And then Peter Frank shows up and he looks like a 90s skateboard kid. Which, which she kind of is. Which I, yeah. Yeah. And then he puts a skateboard down and rides a skateboard in. Which she's done before. Like, which she's done before. I know. And it's just, it's, it was such a weird, it's, it was a very, it was an With interesting. With Peter Frank, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, This was fun. We had Domingos getting Peter Frank's back. Really nice takedown. Yeah. And then Peter Frank going, mm, I'm going to roll through on this. Yeah. Eventually gets the Rafael Domingos back. It's like a crucifix from the back, and yeah. it, I, I watch this over and over again because I like, I love crucifix. Yeah, you it's do. A great position. You're a fan. And uh, Rafael Domingos does a really good job freeing his top side arm and then rolling through. Yeah. But Peter Frank does something really interesting from this. He 
retains his guard, which is something yeah. you can do when they come when someone comes up to you back from the crucifix like this, and then very quickly after that throws an arm bar because he still has Domingos's arm kind of extended. Yeah. But the thing that that was a cool sequence. The thing that really surprised me here was usually when you do an arm bar from this position from this closed guard kind of like it's a closed it's an open guard position from the side, almost like a clamp guard arm bar. Yeah. But uh, you're almost your arm is belly down at the same time. But you're belly down and also your knees are not extended over them. They're yeah. like chalked in. They're yeah. like knees to chest almost. So you're arm barring through your hips. Yeah. Rafael de Mayos does a good job of starting to free his arm and actually making some distance. And Peter Frank is able to actually pull him back in and finish the armbar. Yeah. If you go watch the aerial cam that Fight Pass Invitational has on top, this is a really uncommon ability to retain the armbar. Like yeah. Peter Frank, most people, when they when somebody is able to pull their arm out as far as Rafael de Mayos yeah. is able to, they're unable to get it back. It was really wild to watch Peter Frank be able to pull that back in because yeah. not a lot of guys in the world can can retain that much but space know, in the armbar. But we know he's like a master of the armbar. Oh, yeah. And that, I you, mean, that's all he does. But you can see it here. Yeah. Like, you can see just how good he is at the, the, the armbar because not a lot of people can recover that. Like, Domingo says, yeah. for most other guys, would be ripping the rest of the way out and passing and, like, being out of this position completely. But... Peter Frank is able to pull him back in. Like, that was really, really impressive. And because of the angle of the camera, you can actually see it happening. Extremely impressive. transition from yeah. So it was fun. The whole sequence was fun. Peter Frank was, before he was getting taken down by Rafael Domingos, was, like, dancing. He always, and then he just got taken down. He always it was, dances. It was very, he had the bylock from the back. He just got taken down. But it was a very funny. Yeah. He was having a good time. He's, uh, a, he's always a fun time to watch. Yep. Uh, next match, let's talk about uh, Oliver Taza versus Pedro Hosha. Uh, in my notes, I had this wrong. I had... And then I, I flipped it. Um, Taza wins by a penalty for Hosha. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about Pedro Hosha for a long time. By the way, Miranda has notes on this one for weights. Uh, Taza was 185. Pedro Hosha was 192. So very similar in weight. But yeah. it yeah, this is about the weight that Taza is at. One, yeah, this is one of these. Uh, Taza like, bounces weight a lot. Yeah. And so I think he standardly is about 185. Okay, that makes sense. Um, This was a classic Pedro Hosha match with Pedro Hosha playing the mid-range Low half guard passing. If you make a mistake and overcommit, he'll pass. He'll take your head off with the guillotine. Yeah. If you play a diligent guard like Oliver Taza does, uh, Pedro Hosha will sit in this half guard position the entire match. I and the, that was the match. The one thing that's interesting, and I think we uh, we didn't, so we didn't mention this before, mm-hmm. and we we missed it with the um, Kine and Duarte match. Is that his negative that Kine gets in that match mm-hmm. is from pulling and not aggressively pulling he yeah just, yeah yeah he just sits and he gets a neg- right he sits they warn him he does it again and they give him yeah. the penalty um where oliver Ta- oliver uh, oliver taza and helena Carvar both we're going to talk about her in a second they both do a like two hands on the head and they like grab your head almost like you would grab someone's head for a, a tie clinch like a tie clinch yeah. and then they kind of sit under you mm-hmm. as they do that it's with, an aggressive pull yeah. and th- for the five, five best invitational that's what you have to do to not you can't you can't do a, like a just open pull yeah you can't just sit or even like an ibgf pull yeah. like you have the contact and sit you have to be actively looking to pull them into a guard kind of like what one fc does yeah where you can't like just so you have to actively pull them into something you're doing and like, yes, I'm going to make you play guard with me. Not okay. You have to play guard with yeah. me. It's, I, I actually, I kind of like it because it prevents, it prevents the dumb optics of a guy sitting and then butt scooting towards yeah. his opponent. You have to if you want if you want to play guard, you either have to get him there or you have to pull aggressively into yeah. a thing where you can play guard from. So I think yeah. it's actually a really good rule. But yeah, Taza and Kravar, you picked up on they it. They have the same the pull. same pull. Yeah, but they train together and they yeah. they work out together. And like I think they are. It seems like they are probably primary training partners together because they have a lot of very similar elements of their game. And we've seen even more similar elements over time of Kravar being at New Wave. So the same poll is just another funny, like, oh, yeah, they have very similar pieces of game here. Um, It was Pedro Hosha in the half guard. Taza wins deservedly by penalty. Um, We've seen this match a cup many times from Pedro Hosha. We've seen this match uh, many times from Oliver Taza. Yeah. The same exact. Yep. He plays. He tries to grab your forearm with both of his hands. Mm-hmm. He tries to get you to move. He tries to get you to move. If you don't move, you wind up getting penalties. That's what happens in ADCC matches. Yep. Um, he's doing enough activity to not get 
called for stalling because yep. he is trying to do working. something. Um, but you're not able to get anything moving, and if you do give him anything, then, He's that, take it. then he takes it, you yeah. know? And it's it's kind of like he puts you in a dilemma where, you know, do you try to do something? It is the Pedro Mourinho problem. Yeah. Yep. Uh, again, that mid-range half-guard players, uh, but he did it from the bottom. So, yeah. again, not a, it was yeah. not a super exciting but match. Pedro Rocha gets a penalty uh, for basically stalling on top. And yeah. then I think a very deserved. Taza, he was given plenty of opportunities. Yeah. A very then, deserved penalty. And then Taza... Um, Rides it out in OT. Yep. I, yeah, played it well. Which, I mean, why not ride it out in OT? No, it's, it's a valid way to win. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm less, I'm, ne- I'm trying, even as we've done the show over the years, to make an even better point of, hey, I don't really, my, I don't fault the athletes for playing the game, how they play the game. Yeah. If I want to see something different, I want to look at the rule set for how they do the rule set. And I think this is, like, athletes win. I kind of won me over with his ADCC speech of just like his Craig where he got all the negative versus Craig. He was like, hey man, this is my career. I have to do what I have to do to Dude, win. Dude, you almost won on I mean. I know, but it was, but that moment was like, or you okay, kind of, you, you got yeah. me, man. Like, that's reasonable. Why would you throw your career for an exciting match? You're in the ADCC finals. Do what you have to do. These yeah. guys are money's on the line. These are pro matches. Yeah. Do what you have to do to win. So, let's talk about Helena Cravar versus Ariely Laverne. Um, we've talked about Laverne a bunch, mostly in the gi. Yeah. Uh, she is, you did the research on this yeah. a couple months ago. She is the head instructor and the owner, I think, of Six Blades French Guyana. Yeah. Um, she has been winning a bunch of stuff recently. Euros, so, Worlds, yeah. Pans. We were really excited for this matchup because she's very, very good. And yeah. Cravar, very, very good, had an amazing performance at Trials, but has had some, like, yeah. not up and down performances at, like, We've seen her blow through most of the people she has faced yeah. or have like weird matches. This was Ariel Laverne hanging with Helena Cravar. And Helena Cravar, on the flip side of that, hanging with Ariel Laverne the entire time. And Cravar, most of the time, kind of being in the driver's seat yeah. a bit. I was really, really impressed. Ariel is- has like, at the very beginning, she has like an omoplata, which is really weird that we've had like two matches of omoplata. A bunch. We had yeah. one at Asian Trials last yeah, week, we, too. Yeah, it's like, just the fact that we have that. Maybe it's coming back. Maybe. You never know. I was kind of good at it at White Belt, and then I gave up on it because it doesn't really get you anywhere. In Nogi. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, she had... Clark, Clark, Clark Race would beg to differ that, but also a different era. Yeah. Different era. Different but, era. But um, she, she definitely has one on Helena at the very end, which definitely... Four second stops her, but um, yeah, it's Helena kind of from there is in the driver's seat for most of the match, if not the yeah. entire match. Um, this was by far again, Cravar won trials, like had a great one at trials. Um, by far for me, this is the most impressive match I've seen Cravar in. Yeah, like, I mean, the, it's, the, the, it's the a match with Mo level. versus trials is up there as well, yeah. but this one was just at no point. Did it seem like Quivar didn't have an answer and a plan? And we know how good all their other runners. Yeah. Like we like top as top level as they get at 145, and every single transition of like where we kind of seen Quivar tactically like ah she really wants to play only here she only wants to play guard like we've seen her be very very like I need to get back to the guard to play the guard and like be kind of unwilling to play in other areas versus top level competition that was gone here. That, that I think that is what surprised me the most was that we saw kind of a larger diversity of Cravar's game come out here versus a top level woman in the world. And sometimes, sometimes and did it's well. sometimes it's you you show up for your competition. So if your competition is that good, you yeah. kind of rise up, and your ability rises up with that person. Yeah. So and that's something we definitely saw here. Mm-hmm, um, for sure. Ariely did try. I mean, she tried to roll in Kimura at one point, and yep. there, there was a couple like crazy things. She, had, she, she had sure she had good. I'm not taking she, taking yeah. anything away she from Ariely. She had good moments. She had some good moments and some good attacks at times. Um, but Helena basically didn't really seem to be bothered by most of it, if any of it. Yeah, she would counter, but and then she would get back to what she was trying to do. She, I mean, it was a zero zero, so mm-hmm. she didn't she didn't point her. So yeah, that's something. Yeah, they have, there's a weird section where there is points on the board that was really and they, confusing, and, and then they, they take it away. away. Yeah, um, it looked like an error where there. It looked like an error. I think I think what happened was the top bottom position got switched, kind of like a sweep, but it wasn't it wasn't instigated by Cravar. 
Kravar ended up on top, but she wasn't the one who started the action. The action was started by Ariel. Yeah. And I Which think, you're allowed to do. Yeah. Like and in, I think in ADCC, if you in initiate AD, bottom yeah. position as the top player or going for something, yeah. you're allowed to do that. They stop the match and, and take the points away. Yeah, so. yeah. But it, but it took a minute. Yeah. Or, it, took, it took a little longer than I would have liked to see it, so it was a bit confusing, but yeah. it does go decision. It didn't seem like it really changed the way the tactics of the match were yeah. going. Um, well, but they did correct it. Yeah, and in this, they do do the ADCC um, rule that reversals are still as, as much as sweeps. Yeah, yeah, they right. count them the same. It's way. Ve- the Five Invitational is very similar to ADCC, which I like. I think ADCC yeah. has the best rule set, uh, bar none. Um, but definitely a nogi by far. Yeah, and so I, I like that. I, I like that they they wanted a more action packed nogi rule set. That's yeah. how they keep on explaining it, and which it's makes good. sense because. You want people to watch. Yeah. You want to make it exciting. Like you, I, again, IBJJF has phenomenal positional gamesmanship and work, but a lot of those matches are very, very slow because there's not aggressive requirements for activity. ADCC has aggressive well, requirements for activity, and I think that's needed in a professional. It's a requirement for match. activity to get out of a bad position, but it it's not on the top person that has the position to do anything. Meaning, right. if I'm in mount, I can just chill. It's your job to get out of my mount, right? And I don't have to do shit. Yeah. I can Whereas just ADCC, it, it will ADCC, put, they will. It, your the onus is on the, the top person. The, per, the uh, yeah. person who is either ahead in score, yeah. or on top if yeah. there's even. Like you have you got well, the position. No now matter you what, something. you got to do something. Yeah. yeah. And but but both players are expected to do something too, yeah. Um, but yeah, this was again. I'm I was really really impressed with Kravar because I know how good Arielli is. Yeah, and she, again, Kravar takes a, a close decision, but I think a very deserved decision here. And moving into ADCC only a couple months away, she's still what seventeen. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, like I don't think she's eighteen. Yet. Not eighteen yet. Going into ADCC, taking a win over Ali Laverne. Beating Mo Black, who we'll talk about versus Fionn Davies here coming up yeah. for the for the trials win, super super impressive. And uh, it's it's again it's fun to talk about prospect prodigies, children coming yeah. into ADCC because it seems to happen every year. We haven't seen Dorian Oliveras in months. I have no idea what that kid looks like. I'm so excited. We haven't looked for him. He hasn't been on like a, a card. Yeah, well, but doesn't he's he... He's been doing wrestling. He's been doing he wrestling wrestle? camps. Yeah, he's he wrestling. wrestles. Yeah, he wrestles. he's been busy doing, like, a wrestling sport. Dude, they, so. re- they wrestle every weekend. Yeah. So, we also on this card had Hanatha Moyokano versus Christian Guzman. Uh, Moyokano takes that on points. Uh, that is it for Fight Pass Invitational 7. It was awesome. Watch the card. Uh, it is the reason I keep Fight Pass. Yeah. It's worth it. They run a couple cards a year, and it's absolutely worth the whatever I pay uh, for Fight Pass. Um because they have tons of grappling. Yep. Which is great. And so, it is. It's a fun card all around. Yeah, it was fun. Let's move into the, anything else on that card. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I don't think it. so. It, the fact it was a Wednesday was a little weird. It was weird, but I did like the whole card is pretty short and the action is pretty quick. Yeah. At no point am I waiting for big stretches of time. Like the pacing, it feels like a professionally paced card, which I like. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't bad, but it was just the fact that it was a Wednesday. I don't know. I don't like seeing a blade on Wednesday. No, so like you sleep. Know uh, next, let's move on to ADXC four. This one was five bucks pay per view. Yep, uh, it was three by three rounds for everything. Uh, no, ma- not for everything. I, it. I then realized that in the main events, are the fives. main events are five. Yeah, kind of like an MMA fight, basically. Right. That's how I thought. Uh, it. Main event was two MMA fighters. It was Benoit Saint Denis versus Mark DeCasey. Uh MMA fighters. Yeah. Ben- uh, unanimous decision. Yeah. Benoit uh, gets the decision. Yep. It's a lot of wrestling. It's mm-hmm. a lot of suplexes and cage wrestling and all kinds of fun stuff. It's fun to watch. The greater context it's, of kind of what we talk about, it's yeah, not, it's, those guys aren't really in jujitsu. They're both MMA fighters. So it's yeah. like we don't have the greater landscape of where that fits into the divisions. But or, it looked, but if you, if you thought about two MMA fighters wrestling, like not wrestling, uh, grappling, they used the cage more. They did. Yeah. They did. You saw more like cage you, work and like exactly. You saw more positional work that looked like MMA exactly. than you typically do. Where it's like, oh, the, the foot position you've chosen there is for MMA. Yeah, and exactly. a grappler would probably exactly. do it a little differently. But it yeah. is interesting from a technical perspective. Yeah. Um, next one we have Jiu Jitsu guys. We had Espen Batista defeating Leon Larma uh, via collar choke. Real quick. Just over two minutes. Yeah, he was like, I am going to bolo you. B- basically, <laughs> and he grabs the grips. Leon kind of like starts just the grips, and then Espen eventually like gets the grip he wants, goes underneath kind of like a bear and bolo, yeah. and then gets to the back. And then once that happened, I went, well, Larma's got 
not a whole lot he can yeah. do here. Espen takes his back, almost finishes him cross collar with no hooks. Yeah. Slides the hooks in, really dexterously gets his hook, his like outside hook in. Yeah. In like, you could see his flexibility here and his ability to get that. Gets it, collar choke. That is the entire match. Yeah. Um, very impressive from Espen, but at his level, yeah. it wasn't surprising in the slightest for us. No, it was a pretty bowler. Yep. Uh, next match, we had Theon Davies defeating Mo Black by sub. Uh, first round. Uh, sorry, in the second round. In the second round. In yeah. the first round, um, you could see like some feeling out. Yeah. And then Theon hits. Uh, essentially, was was it first round, or second round, hit, hit bump? No, the hit bump is in the first round, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she yeah, just yeah. hip bumps her. Yeah. And she like she, and she does it in a really interesting way, but she it, does it she does it wildly in a way that I would feel like she did it in a way that would make you feel stupid. Like after it happens, yeah. you'd be like, damn. Like, but you see her control the arm, control the yeah. posture. Like it also just shows you how good Fionn yeah. is because Mo Black is also again trials winner. Yeah. Trials silver medalist, like very, very good and, top level woman in North America. Yeah. And Fionn is able to hit a hip bump. And Mo does a really good job of kind of putting her backside, not not her backside, but her back and side, up against the cage, mm-hmm. so that Fionn can. Get, she can't get her back. She can get the arm, but she can't get the back. She can't get. She can't really isolate the arm enough to armbar it, mm-hmm. but she can't really take the back either. And so she kind of stalls her out into yeah. like the end of the first the, round. Yeah, which I mean, good on it her. It was it was well played. It yeah. was tactically like yeah. think about it. It's, tactically, it was, it was a very. It was, she put the shoulder up that Fionn typically likes to take the arm yeah. bar off of because Fionn had her up, couldn't take the back, couldn't take the yeah. arm because of where Mo put them in that sweep. But it was just, man, we don't see a lot of hip bumps at this level. No, no. Ooh, Fionn is scary good. Yeah. She reminds me of Gordon in like 2018 where it's like you can still have some uh, matches sometimes, but man, generally speaking. So you have to put her against Helena Gravar and see what happens. I'm down. They both put little... Pr- that's an exciting they both matchup. Do, it'd be the the long the long pigtails versus the bunny. The single ponytail. The bunny. No, she does the, the little ones. Oh, she does the buns on she top. Does the yeah, buns. okay. So it'd be the buns yep. versus the long ponytails. Yeah, that would be fun. So in the second round, um, <laughs> sorry for my. Well, we're talking about matchups. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you, you get me going on matchups. I will talk about matchups. It, it all would look day. like it would look like you're if you if you took some Japanese anime and you made a Japanese anime girls jujitsu match. That's what it would look like. Oh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, it'd be like huh. Sailor Moon versus yeah, someone else, but still. Anyway. So in the second round, <laughs> getting us back on track, uh, in the second round, again, we see what we're seeing a lot of the top level people do yeah. in the world. Theon pulls and then immediately does the bump and like does yeah. the tech up, like techs up behind and then sweeps. Yeah. And we've seen Kaina do it. We've seen Theon do it. We've seen a lot, Bardoni do it. Yeah. We've seen Bardoni. But John Carlo Bodoni do it. Bodoni. A lot of top level champions are doing it. Rodriguez has done this. Like yeah. a lot of guys and women at the top levels are doing this. It works for Fion. She immediately gets them out and then she goes, Well, you blocked me with the cage the first round. Tech over, Kimura armbar, bop, yeah. finishes the armbar, and that is it. 126, halfway through. Uh, not, sorry, five. Yep. Yeah. Halfway, halfway through. through the second round. And then you, I, I missed this. You, you have it in our notes. Yeah, she called out Mackenzie Dern. I, I kind of think that Fionn I think she, I think that I think Fionn she, takes it kind of easily. I think she kills McKenzie Like, Dern. man. Like, the two, like, Dern's, Dern's yeah. phenomenal. And yeah. They're both in ADCC. I think they're both in the same weight class. I, uh, it, are they? I think they're under, under 55. 55. I think so. I think they're Fionn. McKenzie is. Dern has those big-ass legs. Like, yeah. I always forget what weight class she's in. Well, she's also moved around. She's a former champion at under 60, but that was yeah. 2013, I think. Um, Again, like, the, until you put someone at Fionn's weight or oh. around Fionn's weight, and she beats Fionn. Heavily, heavily, I'm picking Fionn. Heavily Mackenzie makes weight. <laughs> she's better. She's better about that. She's yeah. the kid. She's been better about that. That's yeah. like three, four years. Um, yeah, yeah I'm. That, that's a fun match. I'll watch that match. But man, I think that yeah, she's an under fifty five, so they're okay. both in under fifty five. I'm down for that matchup. That's an awesome matchup. Yeah. Um, I think Fionn takes that because Fionn yeah. has looked unkillable as of late. But uh, yeah, good for her. Um, great performance. A bunch wonder, of other matches. I wonder if they go into absolute if they put Mackenzie Dern versus Gabby Garcia just because. They've gone against them before. A bunch. I know. I know Mackenzie, Mackenzie has a win over. Yeah, I know. I know. But I was wondering if they would do it. For the old for old time sake. They have an yeah. old time sake match. Yeah, yeah. Um, I watched that. I, again, <laughs> those, there is not a woman in ADCC that I don't want to see in the absolute. Yeah. Like they have, all of those three divisions are just loaded. And I'm I'm so excited for the first women's absolute. What happened to Rafael Agardes? 
We haven't seen her in forever. Rafael Getty? She got announced. She's on. Is she? Oh, Anna Rodriguez. Uh, no, Getty's. We haven't seen Getty's. I swear to God, she was at trials or oh, okay. she was injured or something. Okay, I have, now now I'm kidding. I, I gotta swear look I haven't seen her. I haven't seen her. In a she bit. was killing everyone for, a, for like a year there. Yeah, and then we saw her like a subversive. And that's the last time we saw her. Um, some other great matches on the card. We had Natalia Jesus defeating Elizabeth Mitrovic via decision. We have Nina Blackman defeating Magdalena Loska uh, via a split decision. That was close. I mean, it's Stevie Ray getting a guillotine over Abimov Maine. Um, and that was in the second round. Yeah, she she's in plus sixty-five. Okay, I thought she was announced. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we back also in April a long time ago. We just she she it's hasn't a month been, ago. She hasn't been doing a ton of stuff she, that we've been covering on yeah, the show. Yeah, exactly. We also had Giovanni Martinez, Gio Martinez, um, defeating Nicholas Reiner via heel hook. Um, Gio from the guard inverts under. There's yeah. actually a really neat. Heel hook entry here. It's 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 very hard. It's an uncommon heel hook entry. He almost looks like he's gonna do a waiter, uh, not waiter sweep, a flower sweep, yeah, and then fully inverts over. So it's yeah. a, it's a classic Gio Martinez, it's, like a backside 50-50 I, normally, entry. Normally, I think, generally, you see this with a standing opponent, because like if somebody's standing yeah. and I'm in reverse de la Hiva, you can split over and you can yes. go to the um. The backside leg for like a backside yeah. 50 50 or Back- backside saddle entry or something like yeah, that. Yeah, from like yeah. K. And you can do it that way. I personally have never seen it from like a crushed down seated I position. I think I've seen, I think I've seen this from Gio Martinez before. Uh, okay. I think this is See, something that like I've seen Gio is, do before. This is his thing. But I can't think of the last time I would have seen him do it. It probably would have been in like 2015 well, or something. Because or 16. the last time we saw him, we saw him in. Um, Quintet and Quintet, he got taken out by like Gordon Ryan or not Gordon Ryan, freaking Tyson. No, Craig, 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 because it was back to back brothers. Yep, yeah. So, again, this was impressive. Geo, um, we saw him at trials and then we're seeing him here, but man, he's a very, very good technician when it comes to the legs. Uh, any other matches on this card that you want to He also run looks through? like the lead singer of Red Hot He Chili does Peppers. look like Anthony Kiedis. So just, he yeah. looks very similar. He looks exactly like We put Anthony a side Kiedis. by side in our chat and we're like, that is it, it, the hair. It's the haircut and the mustache are very similar looks. Very similar. They could for, be the uh, same person. They we might be. We don't know. We don't that. know. We don't know. Um, any other matches you want to break down or talk about here? Uh, let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Um, well, uh, I never say her first name right. Natalie? Natalie. You uh-huh. didn't talk about I, I mentioned it a minute ago. You were oh, talking okay. about uh, you were talking about something else. Oh, okay, I was off. I was off topic. Yeah, that was a fun match. Mm-hmm. Mitrovic always looks like she's so angry. Yeah, I think she is. She it's you great. Think, I so I, we've talked to Mitrovic over the years a couple of times. I probably that, should reach out to she, her again. She has like she's super intense when yeah, she competes, she and that, it's like, awesome. Yeah, like one of my favorite moments this year was her finals of West Coast Trials or semifinals. Yeah, she looks and <laughs> it, her and her opponent minute and a half, two minutes of just unblinking maybe blinking but like yeah. straight eye to eye eye contact just waiting for the ref and just staring yeah it got me so hyped for that matchup it was awesome. it wasn't it wasn't finals because finals semifinals because finals was her and uh, amanda yes and i don't remember amanda doesn't really have that i no. mean she does but she doesn't really care like she has she's that, very blase she and, like, has doesn't that like, like she has yeah. the intensity but is not pressed about it and yeah. Mitrovic will like nah, it was, will like look through you yeah it, it, it was it, somebody it was in semifinals cool. who like, was it i don't know but her and, it was like a minute and a half two minutes of, of like they're still doing it this is crazy yeah it was um, them like staring each other yeah. down but natalia takes this via decision again it was it was fun um, again, both those women are, yeah. are phenomenal to watch, and it'd be but fun it to see Mitrovic f- at the yeah. ADCC. It was a fun card. Um, there were some gi matches. The gi matches they always tied the gi sh- or the gi belt. They tape it shut they with tape, tape sh- with yeah. like red or blue tape, which I love because it gets rid of the dumb thing where you take eight minutes, you take yeah. your belt off, do you not? Then nope, belt stays on the entire time. No bullshit. You should do that to kids' classes. <laughs> I've always thought for kids' classes, you should have a belt with underneath it has a little has a little a buckle. Yeah, like it's the belt actually splits in the middle and buckles. That's what I thought you'd have for kids' classes. But well, I mean, what do I know? What's it called? Makes the pants. You and my wife teach kids. I don't teach kids. Well, I teach I teach young adults and and adults and old adults. So that was a fun card. Um, what else do we it have? Was. We have it was. not a whole lot else. No. Really, we have stuff in two weeks. We have um, this weekend. This weekend we have uh, place of peace. Place of peace. Johnny, Johnny Grippo versus um, 
Ramirez? No, not Ramirez. It, Espinoza. Espinoza. Yep. That'll be fun. We may or may not be able to cover that next week. And then next week, two weeks now, we also have pit submission, which is uh, Helena Cravar versus, I think, a UFC fighter. Um, with, with how Cravar uh, looks this uh, weekend, uh, I'm not picking many women against Helena Cravar. No, and the chick she's going against. Bokniak. Yeah, Bok had like some weird post today about like how she's staying in a homeless shelter. I don't know. Some weirdness going on. So like, Hopefully the match happens, but yeah, that's odd. I, I think, oh, AJ Agazarm is on it. He's going against somebody. Uh, who What's was an AJ he, match? Who is he going against? Who has won our hearts and minds over PGF? Yeah, he has. He's like, like, I don't watch AJ don't, match again. Yeah, I don't mind him. Um, give me a second. I have to look at this stuff. About the pit submission. I have to look at yeah, but it's under Karate Combat, so you have to go to Karate Combat. I, they have they have their own they have pit submission has an Instagram now. Mm, do they? Yeah, they do. I have an Ag's arm goes against uh, Lucas Barbosa. Oh, this one. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait to talk about this. Um. Ad, uh, so it's AJ Agazon versus Lucas the Hulk Barbosa. Yeah. What a weird matchup. But I <laughs> love that Agazon would be like, I'll fight anyone. Yeah, he's like, I don't care. Yeah. I, for some reason, think that they've they've yeah. been in the same bracket before. I bet you they But have. I don't think they've ever gone against each other. Or if they have, it was at purple or brown. There has to be one more match. I just don't know what it is. But that'll be fun. So, yeah. uh I don't have a whole lot else, Miranda. Again, it was I'm super happy for the matches on the weekend. We don't have a lot to preview, but we'll have stuff to preview Ooh, next they, week. Oh, and they do have their own website now. Mm -hmm. I didn't yep. know that. And uh, we'll have stuff to to do. Anything anything fun planned for the week? Uh, are you out next week or you? No, I'm in next okay. week, and then I'm away for a week. So, uh, no, I'm doing a wrestling seminar. Who? It's your school. Your school's running it. Mm -hmm. I. That's all I know. I'm doing a wrestling summer. I was supposed to do one last weekend, and I decided to rep instead. Um, so it's doing that and. Yeah, living living life. I got nothing <laughs> else going on. My I'm car is kind of dead. Yeah, you're in the shoe. Which is really off. funny that like I fight in a car, then the, then your the, car dies. The minute the minute later, my car dies. It's like my car was like, you cheated on me by fighting with someone else in another car. I will die now. <laughs> so yeah, so, I got nothing going. On. I got a family thing I'm gonna head to after this, uh, and then I'm I'm been very very busy with work the past couple of weeks yeah. and some other stuff I'm filming for uh, for other projects that I do outside yeah. of Grappling Rewind. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. I got nothing else. Marie, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. All right. As always in the show, I'm your host, Mange, my co-host, Miranda, and we are the Grappling Rewind. So that what it is. Stay safe. If you like the show, please consider sharing it on Facebook with the folks at your gym. It's the best way that we grow the show, and we really appreciate it. You can reach out to us on email. We also have Instagram. We have Facebook. We have. Twitter, we have Google Plus. Until that shuts down. We have a website. If you have an event you would like to have us cover, please let us know. If you have a name, like most people do, and you'd like to have us stop butchering it, let us know. Reach out to us. The show is also available on YouTube, Spotify, in addition to iTunes and every other podcast service. We very much appreciate your time and thank you.